Well, hello, YouTube. On today's episode of Know Your Rights, we will be covering multiple lawsuit settlements from the city of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. If this sounds interesting to you, please take a moment and subscribe to our channel. Also, if you love retro video games as much as I do, please check out our channel, Retro Gaming Central. Now, let's take a deep dive on what actually is taking place in Milwaukee. Taxpayers are footing the bill for police misconduct cases in Milwaukee once again, with the committee of the Common Council members signing off on at least one legal settlement on Monday and reviewing another that includes an ex-police officer who has received settlements in excess of $1 million. An agreement for $650,000 was reached in 2017 between two police officers who shot an unarmed man they had surrounded on a rooftop. This settlement was authorized by the city council, but the settlement still needs to be approved by the entire common council. Despite lengthy closed-door talks, committee members were unable to agree on a proposed $275,000 settlement in a case involving Michael Vagnini, who was convicted of criminal contempt for conducting illegal strip and body cavity searches. If the settlement is accepted, it would bring the total amount paid out in six lawsuits involving Mr. Vagnini to around $935,000. In August of 2017, Milwaukee police officers shot and killed an unarmed man on the rooftop at 2905 West Wisconsin Avenue in the Merrill Park area. Someone with a pistol had been reported near the North 29th and West Wall Streets, and the police were dispatched to the scene. Jerry Smith, who was 19 at the time, ran away from the officers when they approached him to speak to him. In one of the officer's observation, Mr. Smith was attempting to secure a gun-shaped device in his pants, which the officer believed was in the possession of one of the cops. Mr. Smith asserts that he was attempting to surrender. Body cam footage released in late 2018 shows Jerry Smith Jr. was seen spreading his arms and fingers as Officer Stahl and Officer Finkley approached him with their pistols drawn. During the moment when the Mr. Smith appears to be falling to the ground, the two officers shoot him three times from close range. According to Daniel Storm, a private investigator working on Mr. Smith's federal civil rights complaint against the city, Mr. Smith survived but suffered permanent partial paralysis in his right leg despite undergoing three operations. Mr. Smith is suing the city for civil rights violations. Officer Stahl and Officer Finkley were justified in using lethal force, according to Chief Deputy District Attorney Kent Laverne, because they believed Mr. Smith was armed or reaching for a pistol. According to reports, no firearms were ever discovered on Mr. Smith. The officers had argued that they were covered by qualified immunity, a doctrine that protects government officials, including police officers, who are accused of constitutional infractions in civil lawsuits while doing law enforcement duties that incur during their employment. The city has filed an appeal against the U.S. District Judge Lynn Adelman decision that the officers were not entitled to qualified immunity protection. In August of 2021, a panel of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals for the United States dismissed the officer's qualified immunity petition, remanding the case back to the district court for further proceedings. Another development in the court struggle between Mr. Vignini and the three other officers who were represented by the Milwaukee City Attorney's Office and Attorney Jerpal D. Spencer has resulted in an offer of a proposed settlement in the amount of $270,000. In past lawsuits, the compensation amounts have ranged between $35,000 and $410,000, depending on the circumstances. Robert Bowman stated during a meeting that City Attorney Tierman Spencer appeared to be advocating for Japal Spencer rather than the taxpayers of Milwaukee, and that actually appeared to be true. Prior to the committee going into closed session to discuss the matter, Mr. Bowman stated, I am not approving a single cent in this case. Mr. Vagnini was sentenced to 26 months in prison and an additional 34 months of supervised parole in 2013, according to court records. 
Earlier in the year, Mr. Vagnini had entered a no-contest plea to four felonies and four misdemeanors, which included breaking the strip search law, misconduct in public office, and second-degree sexual assault, among other charges. Mr. Vagnini was actually found not guilty of a separate sexual assault accusation against him. Specifically, according to the federal lawsuit at hand, Jerpal Spencer claimed that he was unjustly stopped and attacked and strip searched in three consecutive occurrences between May and July of 2011. According to Mr. Spencer, Mr. Vagnini is the perpetrator of the criminal conduct during two of these events. One other officer who was named in the lawsuit as a witness to the searches conducted by Mr. Vagnini did not interfere during the incident. Mr. Spencer also filed a claim against two other current officers, Keith Garland Jr. and Michael Vouch Jr., alleging that they were negligent. He claims that after a traffic stop, the police should have sought a search warrant because they feared Mr. Spencer had eaten a bag of drugs. The officers then transported him to Columbia St. Mary's Hospital, where the staff there pumped his stomach despite the fact that he had not requested medical attention. The lawsuit was settled during mediation when Mr. Spencer and his counsel made an offer of $540,000 to settle the dispute. However, that settlement offer has been rejected by the city attorney's office. Well, YouTube, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content like this video. Until the next episode of Know Your Rights, stay safe out there. Before we break down this footage, I want to take a moment and talk to you about We the People University. If you haven't heard about this online course, I want to let you in on a little secret. Its sole purpose is to train you to know what it takes to make sure you are not unfairly treated by the police ever again. Who better to teach you what to do when the police try to search you or your property illegally or violate any of your constitutional rights than former police officer and sheriff's deputy Abaya Israel. Learning your basic rights is an easy process. The only thing it takes is you being willing to learn. Do you want to learn all the trick questions that police ask during a traffic stop? Do you want to take back control from the police? If so, please click on the link in the description below. You will learn the secret of taking control of your constitutional rights back from the tyrants who abuse the law.